little in, in over my waiters on that, to be honest, but <laughs> size. <D> depending. Depending. <laughs> so we're filming two vans today. One of them is brand new, that 2023 Customer Transit, but this is your personal van. So uh, 2011, right? Yep. Ford E350. So tell me, how did you get it originally? Because it was nothing like this when you bought it. This van came from Albuquerque. It was a wheelchair accessible van. It was white. It didn't have the high top on it. That gentleman had bought the van brand new. Got it converted to four wheel drive at Quigley. V10 motor, four wheel drive already. And when we got it, it had 15,000 miles on it. Wow. So basically brand new. This yeah. is a fiberglass hop top because you said standing height. Yeah. You want to be able to stand inside your rig. And then it's custom, right? Your tent. Yeah, so all the all the canvas and everything, the lift mechanism, we built all of it in-house. The fiberglass part of it came from a company in California called Fiberine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look and talk about the Quigley conversion underneath. Yep. The crossover between an F-Series, like the F-350 pickup trucks and the E350 vans mm -hmm. was always pretty strong, right? Like the whole rear end of the van is really, really similar. What Quigley did with the four wheel drive conversion on these vans is they took an F350 front axle with coil buckets, so coil sprung front end. They got rid of all of the radius arm suspension that was all in the, the stock conversion uh -huh. and then swapped it in with what you see here. So you've got coils on the front end and then a Dana 60 front axle with a four link suspension to tie it all in. It's really, really similar to to what an F-350 looks like. Uh -huh. um, there's other companies that are out there these days that make like almost plug and play versions that use only like Ford manufactured parts. Uh, Quigley does use like a handful of proprietary pieces and parts right. to make their conversion work. We didn't talk about the wheel and tire before, but this is obvious. This is the same thing. You this is full size, same yep. thing you have all the way around. So Falcon Wild Peaks. Yep. What What are the? Uh... These are a 285, 75, 17. So basically okay. like a 34. Right. Um, we went with these in particular just because they're you can get them in, in an 11 and a half wide instead of going to a 35 that you have to step into a 12 and a half wide. So overall width of it. Yeah. Um, so why? Because I mean, this will be better in snow. Is that why? Or? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a narrower tire is going to be better in snow. Yeah. Um, the highway handling of a narrower yeah. tire is going to be better. Okay. Oh yeah, it won't like tram line or we're like not follow. Really looking like a whole for a whole lot of float out of this van. I mean, it's a nine thousand pound van, so. What do you mean? You know, what does float mean? Yeah, uh, like if you're in like sand or deep snow or something like that. It's just not the area that we live in. Okay, so sorry, but more surface area on the tire on yep. a soft surface like snow or sand. If you air it down, it would stop you from sinking. Exactly. But you don't. You're not so, that worried about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we weren't really concerned about that just because. I mean, we live in the desert. Yeah. We're driving on slick rock, or like compacted trails in the high country. Soft sand is like not necessarily our our area nemesis, right? Yeah. And we got to drive a lot of highway miles to get to any trail. So yeah. um, something with a little bit more road manners was was nice to have. Your bumpers in the front, yep. that, those those are from U-Joint. Yeah, are, so is both, this? Both front and rear bumper okay. are from U-Joint Off-Road. They do a lot of really, really high-end aluminum work. Mm -hmm. um, front bumper is crazy how light that thing is. So that's aluminum? Yeah, it's all aluminum. This though feels like this, steel? This bumper is a steel, substructure oh. and then an aluminum skin huh. around the lower part of the bumper cool um and then just to try and keep keep weight where you need it and not where you don't that's cool so it's uh it, it's a pretty sweet bumper as far as like usability and how it all works i'm super super happy with it so, yeah and then uh, pelican case oh really comes with the spare tire mount nice because so. that's what i mean pelicans are yeah they're yeah, awesome they're awesome and they're light right yeah. You lock them. They're they're kind of a, a simple solution to some rear door storage. So could we swing these out? Yep. And these just unlatch. Cool. Oh wow, so Molly like Molly panel 
yep. on the inside if you want to. I'm I'm so into Molly now. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. cool. We've got some bike rack designs that are in the works that'll integrate into this whole thing. Right. This thing's like strong enough to hold all the weight, right? It feels like it. yeah. <laughs> so inside, when we cut out the spare tire mount, it gave us a little bit more room. So we added in this battery box. So we've got a Lithionix 320 amp hour battery right. that powers everything in the van. This is a self heat battery that communicates with all of our Victron system through a CAN bus. So you're getting real time data transfer between the battery to the electrical system and the solar and alternator charger all talk to each other. Okay. I'm a little in, in over my waiters on that, to be honest, but. <laughs> We've got a 2000 watt inverter that does all of our 110 electronics. So induction cooktop, any of these outlets, it does shore power charging. And then we also have two Victron 30 amp alternator chargers. They're a battery isolator. So whenever the van's running, it's sending 60 amps of power back to the house battery. Oh, wow. Um, and then we've got a single 200 watt solar panel on the roof. Basically with that system, if you're ever shy on power, you can kick your van on and you're gonna get an additional 60 amps. Or if you're driving around, you get like a pretty quick reach charge but you know if you go on a river trip you got cold beers and ice cream in your fridge it'll still be cold when you get off the river in 10 days wow so that's a, a pretty big bonus so you said dual alternators is that right no it's or... not a dual al alternator system it just ties into the existing alternator so when the van is running you're charging the normal van battery and then also this guy here yeah which is powering everything yep. else you've got going on. Super cool. Yeah. One of the big things with the Lithionics batteries is that they have like a, a never die battery management system. Mm. So once that battery gets to 20%, it will shut itself off, which leaves you with enough of a reserve that you could always start your van, mm. right? So you could all, even if all of your systems failed, you could still like come back here, flip that switch, and then start your van and be able to drive away. Yeah. So this is Phil for, this van has 20 gallons of water. Oh on yeah, board. right. So that's Phil, and then you've got a spray port. So if you wanna spray your bike, spray yourself, fill up, spray your kid. Yeah, uh, awesome. You've got like that access back here. Okay, so let's hop in the van. Yep. We can check out the inside. That's factory. Yeah. All your auxiliaries. Do these do anything right now? Uh, not currently. Okay. We got some lights. But lights, you could do lights. Lights on the way. We did do like an upgraded stereo. So you've got a mic there. Different little goodies in there. Four wheel drive shifters down here. Yeah. With a custom shift knob. Death Star. Yeah. So, quadanium steel the Death Star, <laughs> but this is 3D printed. <laughs> no, that's or... actually a uh, concrete Death Star. Oh, uh, right, okay, yeah. Concrete and steel, yeah. countertops, all sorts of stuff. Your other business. So, our other business. Yeah. Um, so we make all sorts of like fun little goodies like that. Wow, so pour in yeah, it's, mold. It's, a, it's like a silicone ice cube mold. You can get them on Amazon for like 10 bucks. That's what that is. Pour it concrete into yep. it. I love it. What's going on here? Uh, these are leftovers. These are leftovers from the, oh, the uh, wheelchair the wheelchair lift. Mm. So they're just they're blank. They they're cool. all there. So, uh, but I don't remember what you told me about this this fabric. What what's the so deal with the fabric? All of our wall material is all done with a, a PVC weave mm. fabric. It is called Pfeiffertex. Mm. It's basically what they make outdoor furniture, like sling chairs. Rafting companies use it to make drag bags and everything bags, all the gear for all your rafts and stuff like that. It's all made out of this stuff. It's super, super durable. Because it's a PVC weave, it doesn't stain, right? So, and you can't like wear through it quite so easily. Really, really durable. And you can spill your coffee on it and clean it. It's fine. Yeah. You can wipe it with acetone. It's great. So that's a level, isn't it? Yeah, these are just little. Yeah. You take for granted that your house is yeah, like probably like, level. Sometimes it's half the fun. It's like, okay, I'm going to stack these rocks up and then I'm going to drive up on these rocks. And yeah. Like, and now you can see. Flat. Yeah. <laughs> so induction. So yeah. Cooktop. At our galley, we've got an induction cooktop. We've got a little narrow sink 
We've got a 130 quart isotherm fridge and then a planar gasoline heater that's underneath all the sink and everything. Uh -huh. So that that all runs, it's all tied into the, the van's fuel tank. Wow. Basically, if you've got gas, you can keep your van warm. So then CNC... That's actually the Snuffles Mountain Range. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. If you were, if you were in Ridgeway, looking at the Snuffles Mountain Range, that would be what you're looking at. Nice. And these cabinets, magnets or? They are a marine slam latch. Okay, that's so what like I was gonna ask. You like pull that open and it it releases the clasp. Right. And then once it closes, it kind of slams closed. And the the forward seats have always been like notoriously uncomfortable so yeah we swapped them in with these shielmans they're a german company they got a base out in portland if you're looking for an upgraded seat so what's going on here up there we've got the galley light switch and the ceiling light switch for the pucks that are up up top and then the button in the center is our water pump so that's what powers like all of our water system for the spray port and for the sink. And then next to that, you've got our heater control. Then next to that is our Victron display. So that gives us all the battery information that, that we need for our whole system just to keep track of everything. It allows us to turn the inverter on and off. We've got different things like uh, water tank monitoring mm -hmm. is all through there. But there is a gray water tank just for the sink. So the water goes down the sink from your freshwater tank through the sink and then into a gray water tank and not just Correct. out the bottom of the van. Correct. So you get to decide when you... Yep. So that's a toilet? Yep, this is a but, toilet. But it's self-contained, yeah? Or yep. is it is so you're is, into a bucket? This is a Trellino toilet. It is a separator toilet. So it has a solids compartment and a liquids compartment and you line it with a wag bag, wag bag. for i think they say like six to eight uses is how many solids you get out of this one size depending and depending <laughs> take care of that wag bag it can go in a dumpster go into the landfill yeah you're all good so this guy this is a bed this whole thing folds down this is a broad arrow seat it folds into another full-size bed yeah. So the back part folds down, this part kind of flips up and folds down. The Westphalia setup exactly. that you would have in a van again, it's very reminiscent it's, of that. It's like, totally an updated version of that. Right. The way the kitchen sits there with the window, and then when you're sitting in this seat in a Westie, you have this thing totally. and then drop down in there too. Yep. Is there anything we missed, you feel like? This sweet light that's, right that, here. That's what I was just looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the color, but this is a Toyota color. What is it called? Calvary Blue. Okay, so you just saw it go up. Uh, it's like, I don't know, maybe like 45 seconds or something like that. Which like getting to your spot and having not setting up a tent and then leaving in the morning and not breaking down a tent is awesome. You never have to get outside. Yes, right? yeah. I can park the van, turn it off, swivel the seat around, put the top up yeah and never get out so consider maybe that it's winter and like you're you've been driving all day so you took your shoes off but yeah. your campsite there's snow and ice on the ground you you never have to step outside you got your toilet you your kitchen toilet. like the airflow in here changed a lot yeah it's like it feels like really nice in here now yeah all right so thank you so much for watching that's that's gavin's personal 2011 e350 build with the quigley 4x4 conversion seats five yeah seats five sleeps four sleeps four super cool how do people get in touch with you if they want to your business uh, vanlabdurango.com vanlabdurango.com and Instagram too. Yep, we've got Instagram, Facebook, all that. And now we're going to make another video about a customer build that transit. So uh, thanks for watching. See you later. You want to do some mobile stuff? You want to drive it around? Uh, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Okay, uh, scratch that. We're going to drive it. <laughs> <laughs>